Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 19 of my web design and programming tutorial. Today, I'm going to cover interaction with PHP and MySQL specifically. What I'm going to show you how to do here today is to create drop down boxes that automatically interact with each other and change their values based off of what values are selected in other drop down boxes. So, for example, if I was looking for products available for digital copiers, it would automatically just now display the manufacturers of said products that can be used. Okay, so you can see all all of this interaction here and if you haven't seen past tutorials definitely check those out otherwise you will definitely be confused in this circumstance and also in the underbar I have a link to the completed code this whole entire program that totally works you should download it and follow along as we go through here and that way it'll be a much more understandable here as I previously talked about in past tutorials is how I'm going to connect to the database and yes by the way you should never do this because this is a security flaw but I'm going to be getting into PHP security here very soon. What you should instead do is use the include function and then link to a file that is stored in your CGI bin folder that should be protected and normally the name of this file is config.inc.php. This is what you should do. I'm going to cover this in upcoming tutorials, but basically you would just copy this, paste it inside of this guy right here in the CGI bin folder, and it will automatically work. And of course you would want your permissions set properly. And here's just obligatory HTML code, which you should understand. If not, check out my HTTP tutorials. And then right here is some JavaScript. And I also have a JavaScript tutorial. If you guys request it, I will redo it in this new format that I've been using that you guys seem to like. Basically what this is doing is the value stored in this drop down box over here is called cat. This is called cat2 and this is called cat3. Okay, just think of those as variables. So what this is doing is this drop down box is in a form and it's saying to get the value stored in cat this drop down box and assign it to a variable called val and then what it's doing is it's going to recall the name of this page and put that value that category had stored inside of it anytime you set a new value to self.location in javascript it reloads the page and you can see this happen right here so here i'm on hamtest.php and i'm going to change the value of cat to calculators see now cat is equal to 3 because the value of calculators is 3. And if I change it to cash registers, you can see it's now 4. So that is what is going on here. This is reloading the pages every single time you change the value of any of these three categories. All right, now I'm going to jump into the actual PHP code. What we need first is to get all the data from the MySQL database and stick it in this guy right here. How we do that is we issue a query. So I'm going to create a variable called query1 or q-u-e-r1 and I'm going to call the MySQL query function and issue it a query to give me product type name and the part ID associated with that. You saw over here calculators for example obviously calculators is product type the name of the product and three is the part ID associated with calculators. And I'm going to tell it to get this from the database called product ID, where part ID is a value that I list here using the in command. And this is actually a database I was brought in to fix. But often what happens is a client likes the way things are set up and you have to sometimes work with them. What they wanted was the option to be able to completely get rid of certain product types and add additional product types. So the original developer of this database decided to use the in command here. Yes, it's kind of fugly, but that's what we're working with. And this also reinforces how to use in. All right. And then we're going to say order by part ID and then close off that query. And that is all you need to do to get all of the information that you need to put in this drop down box. Now we've got to create our second drop down box. And now we need to store a value into cat if it has already been set. And because a value might not have been set for cat, we're going to put the at symbol in here. What this is going to do is suppress any errors. 
and I'm going to call for the value stored in the array for get and get the value stored specifically in cat if it does exist. Remember again, we want to put the at symbol in here so that if it doesn't exist, this doesn't trigger an error. That's what the at symbol is used for. And this is also how you would interact if global variables are shut off inside of PHP, which is great because that closes a security loophole, which I'll be getting into here in a second. Again, as you watch this, pick up whatever you can, whatever you can't pick up, that's perfectly fine. But for the most part, all of this information has been covered in past tutorials. Here I'm checking that there is a value stored in cat and that it has a string length greater than zero. If there is a value stored in that category, remember again, cat is this guy up here. So we're just checking to see if there's a value stored in there. And if there is, we're going to create another query that is going to get the values needed to put in cat2 right here. And how we're going to do that, select distinct. Again, distinct just keeps duplicates from occurring. And then we're going to call, and this is actually the exact query that I talked about in the last tutorial. And I'm asking for the manufacturer's name and the ID associated with the manufacturer's name from the table called manufacturer ID and the table called model numbers, where model numbers dot part ID is equal to the value stored in category. So we're only, only going to get back manufacturer names and manufacturer IDs for those products that match the part ID that was chosen up here. Remember, we're trying to fill all the information into this guy right here based off of what has been chosen up there. And we want to make sure that the manufacturer ID numbers in the table called manufacturer ID are equal to the man IDs stored in the table called model numbers. And we want to put them in alphabetical order based off the manufacturer's names. But what if there is no value set for this guy? Well, we want to protect against that. And we're going to issue a completely different query, but we're going to give it the same name. I'm just going to copy this guy right here, paste him in right here, except we're only going to pull in information from the table called manufacturer ID. So we don't need that from and order them by manufacturer's name. And we're going to close that off. So what this is going to do is if there is no value set up here, let's just come in here and make that so. Reload it. All right, there's no value set here. So what's it going to do? It's going to pull up every manufacturer name. This would allow people to search based off manufacturer name instead of product name. So that's what we're doing right there. So what do we have to do now? Well, we have to create the third drop down that's going to contain all the model numbers. That would allow people to come in here and search based off of model numbers. So again, we're going to come in here and get the category three value if it exists. And whenever we don't know if it exists, we put the at sign in there to suppress errors. I'm going to jump up here and actually copy this. Copy. Because we're doing the same thing. And actually, I should throw this into a function on its own. But I sort of want to separate this stuff sometimes and do some extra things that I necessarily wouldn't have to. Only so you can see things being done multiple times. So hopefully that it sinks in. Because I know this stuff is a little bit complicated. Query 3. And again, I'm just looking for information in the database by querying for it. Here, I'm going to be looking model numbers from the model numbers table where model numbers manufacturer ID is equal to the value stored in cat3 and model numbers part ID is equal to the value stored in the first category that we have here order by model numbers otherwise else I'm going to put every single model number in here. I know this isn't exactly the best thing to do, maybe the most useful thing, but it would allow people to search if they only knew their model number. Select distinct model number, model number, from table called model numbers, order by the model number. And then we want to close that off. And then going to be putting all this information in a form. So we have to actually create the PHP code needed for said form. And here we're going to create the drop down boxes themselves. So again, echo to screen, select name equal to, see if you can guess what it's called, cat. Hopefully you got that right. And then right here, we're signaling that if there is a change, we're going to have to use a backslash here because we're going to use that double quote twice. We need to call the reload function that's created in JavaScript above that I went over and then backslash that double quote again, option value is equal to, and we're not going to give it that default, select one, and close that off. Then we're going to call while, 
results. And what we're going to do here is fetch a row of data based off of the query we submit here using the MySQL fetch array. It's going to assign the values from that row based off the query we issued, assign them to an array called results. If results for part ID is equal to, again, put the at sign in there to suppress errors, the value stored in category, then we want to echo to screen the value stored in that array and the actual product type name. Close that off and then I'm going to put a break statement in here. Right like that. Else, I'm going to echo to screen. Just the part ID number. And then close that box off. And then you want to close off your select box, right like that. And I'm actually going to copy this break statement. Boom. Right like that. And that is everything that you need to do for the first drop-down list. And you're almost done. Like, extremely close to being done. In fact, what you're going to be able to do is come in here and just copy this code and instead change only two things. Meaning, this is going to be changed from query 1 to query 2. And this is going to be changed from cat to cat3. So just paste that inside of there. So here's your selection box. And I'm just going to call this subcat and reload to call the different JavaScript function. Everything else there is the same, except here I'm going to call this results2. And I'm going to change this into query2. This is going to be results2. And instead, I'm going to have the manufacturer's ID instead of the part ID. This is going to be cat3. And then here, because I changed the part ID, I'm just going to come in here and change this to manufacturer's ID. This is results2. So is this. And instead of product type, this is going to be manufacturer. For the manufacturer's name, still want the break statement in there. Else, this guy right here is again going to change this to results2 and man ID and results2 and product type to manufacturer. And you want to close off that box as well. And then guess what? Third drop down box is going to be created in exactly the same way. Paste that inside of there. Here's the beginning of the selection box. We're going to call this subcategory 3. When this changes, we're not going to need to reload the page because it's going to be submitted with the submit button. So we can get rid of this altogether. Delete all that information. All that can stay exactly the same. And then here we're going to have results 3 instead of results 2. And we're going to look up the query, the third query that we created above. We're going to be able to delete this information right here. Then just come into this echo statement and put results 3 again, model number, results 3 again, stored in that array. Copy model number from here, paste that inside of here, just like that. Close off the drop down box and then close off all your PHP code. And here we're going to create the submit button equal to submit value equal to submit. Close that off. And then, of course, close off the form as a whole. And if we come in here, and then if we come over here and type in ham test 2 and reload that page, you can see that all that information is available right here. And all of these little guys automatically update each other. So it's a pretty useful program in general. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Otherwise, I'll catch you next time.